um, or um, you can have your name on there. And what I love about it as a tool for using with our students is that it can extend the learning day. Um, you can post questions on here and have students reply to them. It can be used in so many different ways and there's different formats that you can set it up as well. So right now we're kind of in different columns, but um, there's different ways to set it up. And um, it, it could be used as a great tool for our students who are deaf and hard of hearing that may not want to ask a question in front of the whole class. Um, they could also um, use it in a way that um, they're being collaborative um, and maybe not have the language barrier there. So several different ways. I love all of the people um, that are adding to this. This is amazing. Um, please, if you have Twitter handles, please put those on there. We would love to connect with you on Twitter. Yeah, I didn't mention my Twitter handle is also on there, at JL Fallbush. And Katie just mentioned, please connect with us on Twitter. It is a wonderful professional learning network of educators. I only use it professionally, so I don't allow it into my personal social life and taking time away from those meaningful interactions with others around me. But I do glean lots of webinars, free opportunities, uh, links to resources. There's just so much there. and available at no cost. Karen asked, how are we adding to this? You can double click anywhere on the Padlet map to open up a new box that I just modeled for you. I'm going to delete that because I'm not going to use it. Or you can click on the plus sign in the bottom right hand corner. So thank you for sharing. That'll remain up for um, quite a while. So continue to check back on the Padlet and connect with other educators like yourselves on this Padlet. We are from the Patents Project. You've heard us mention briefly, and hopefully you're familiar. If anyone is familiar, feel free to shout it out in the chat. Patents stands for Promoting Achievement Through Technology and Instruction for All Students. It is a giant acronym. And we have this mission that Katie will tell you more about. Sure, so here at the Patents Project, we're all about universally designed access, engagement and participation, and we're gonna talk a lot about what those things mean in this um, webinar. And our mission simply states, um, supporting Indiana public schools in creating and sustaining an equitable learning environment for every student. So a lot of times um, people think that the student needs an IEP to receive our services and that is not true. Um, we are here for every student and we want to promote access um, and engagement through um, achievement and uh, technology. We have a laundry list of services and I won't go through all of the 10 on the screen today, but I do want to highlight that we host a couple annual conferences. We had our virtual Patents Tech Expo back in April that is free each, um, each spring typically. And this was our first virtual experience with the COVID-19 pandemic. It went well, we were excited and we're looking at maybe hosting it virtually again next year. Our fall conference, which is called Access to Education, is our one at cost event. And it has also gone virtual, which has cut our price down in half. So that's really exciting. And I just love that the virtual platform allows for so much more access. I think we'll be seeing a lot, of, a lot more virtual events um, even post the pandemic. I do want to po uh, point out that we offer free professional development to Indiana public educators. And so we can come in and consult with you or offer professional development to groups of teachers or to you and your colleagues. So know that we're here for you. You just have to let us know what you're looking for. We do also offer a grant each school year to um, up to 15, I think, school districts this year. Um, it's called the Aiming for Achievement Grant and that application window is now open. If you were to apply and receive that grant, that would mean that you get intensive intervention from the Patents Project to support your entire school district in making sure 
that you are in compliance and that all students have access to accessible educational materials. We also offer you no cost access to three different Don Johnston tools, which include Snap and Read, UPAR, and CoWriter. And we support your whole district for the entire year and implementation of those tools, building an accessibility manual and an accessibility statement on your website, plus lots more. So if you're interested in that grant for your school district, please share it with the right person that might be able to fill that out. Or if that's you, know that that's available and we can always provide you more information. We also can help you with the application process if you have questions. And know that we operate the assistive, or we have an AT assistive technology lending library you can borrow from as public educators, all kinds of apps and equipment and low tech seating to high tech braille devices, for instance, for six weeks at a time. And we operate the Indiana Center for Accessible Materials, or the ICAM as we call it, which is where we support your students with documented print disabilities and gaining access to materials in an accessible format for their individual needs. In our at one um, cost event is access to education. We call it A2E. And it's gone virtual for this fall. And um, we would love to have you join us. It's gonna be um, a wonderful couple of days. We also have a awesome pre-session um, the night before um, it starts. And we're really excited about it. So we would love for you guys to come. We have national and regional and local um, presenters. We are working on some really cool um, new digital features to have you interact with UDL classrooms and um, and explore the tools that the specialists have that we usually have around a table um, for you to explore different tools at the in-person conference. We're exploring some new things to have you interact with those digitally. So um, it's going to be a cool event and we would love to have you. You can ask questions. Um, on the Lino wall. We're just sharing lots of tools today in the spirit of universal design for learning. So know that if it's too much for you, you don't have to use it. That's okay. These are options for you. So Katie will share and has already put the Lino wall in there if you would like to ask some questions. For instance, let's say you come up with a question after our session today, you can post it to the Lino wall and Katie and I will respond for about the next week. We'll make this available to you. Of course, you can always ask us questions via email or on on Twitter too. And we're also going to point out this crowdsourcing document that we've been building now for over a year at tinyurl.com backslash crowdsourcing captions. And if you're typing in these links and not clicking from the chat box, that is okay. Know that tiny URLs are not case sensitive, so you can type them without the capitals. And I'll take a peek at the Lino wall and the crowdsourcing document. And I will mention too that we're nearly through these beginning um, introductory slides. So thanks for holding on with us because I know sometimes we just want to get to the meat of the presentation, but we'll get there soon. So here is that Lino wall where we have the um, sticky notes. So kind of like Padlet, it's another free resource for you as a teacher or um, you know, parent to use it, you know, whatever you might see fit. And it is um, no cost, it's simple to use by grabbing a post-it in the upper right hand corner. If you click on it, it should pop to the center of the screen and then you have the ability to ask your questions and um, change the color of the note, change the font size. You could actually put a due date on here, for instance, if you wanted to share out an important message with students. And like Padlet, this can this is anonymous unless you're to type your name in the question box. So it's a great way for your students to interact beyond the school day or in case in class they're not feeling comfortable in raising their hand. This allows that flexible access. And then to post it in the bottom right hand corner of the window pop up is the post button. And then you have the ability to, um, oh, no, actually you don't. We have the ability to move them around. For some, oh, no, you can. I just couldn't click on it right. So you can move it around because sometimes post-its will um, label or stick over somebody else's post-it. So make sure it's readable. 
And then if you wanted to delete it, the bottom right hand corner says peel off and there's a check mark that you can peel it off to remove it. So today you can share your questions on here. You can also share your biggest takeaway. We'd love to know what you learned and what you will use in your classroom. Um, as soon as you know you're back in the in the classroom setting or in a virtual setting with your students. Katie, was there anything you want to add about that? Um, it's very similar to the Padlet. And hang on a second, I I accidentally typed in the wrong URL. Julie, I'm sorry if you used my um, what I oh, typed. No I'll let you get that typed in. I think we're all good. So know that the Lino is here for your questions um, during the presentation and then again after for about the next week or so. We'll make sure to keep it up and respond. And if you would like an email response from the Lino, just make sure to include your email address. The crowdsourcing document is also available to you. And this is a place where we really encourage your participation. So this is at tinyurl.com slash crowdsourcing captions. And this is where you can type onto here any uh, captioning resources you know of that you don't already see listed. So that could be from professional services to automatic captioning resources to video captioning um, to ways to caption videos you don't own or your own videos. This resource has been growing, like I mentioned, for the last year or so, and we love to keep we'd love to keep it going because the resources are ever changing and ever um, improving. So we're very grateful for that. That finally, you know, we've had the TV captions and some of those professional caption services, but now we're really improving that universal access. So anywhere you can just click on there and type it and, and we can format it. You don't have to worry about making sure it looks exactly the same if um, you're someone like me that likes the visual component as well. We can take care of that. So know that there's all kinds of resources on here and links. All of the blue underlined um, text are links to those resources um, or to more information or maybe even a quick how-to video on how to use that resource. And I'd like to point out too that a la carte connections is listed here and that's um, who um, is being used for this conference and who um, if you have been to any of uh, the patents webinars or um, tech expo or even A2E um, access to education conference that's who we use and we love them so if you're looking for someone um, for you know services at your school or um, whatever we recommend them. <laughs> All right, so let's have a good conversation today. Please do use those resources if they make sense for you and ask your questions or use the chat box or you're welcome to unmute and ask your questions verbally if that's a choice for you. I do recommend that if you ask your questions verbally um, you also show your camera so that it's easier to see that person's face and know who's asking participate in the chat and keep building and reviewing that crowdsourcing captions document, maybe bookmark it for yourself in your, in your browser or make a copy. Just know that that remains for you to use and to build. Our goals for today's session include describing three educational benefits of using caption media and content in a universally designed classroom. We also hope that by the end you can identify at least three tools for creating captions in that universally designed space and to describe one example for how caption media and content can support facilitation of each guideline of UDL. So we're going to be diving into this question. Are captions for all students? Is it for everyone? Um, let's dive into that a little bit more. Who benefits from these captions? We've got three um, items listed here, but really I think it could even go beyond these. But we're looking and thinking today about students who are learning new languages. Captions can really benefit those individuals. Students building early literacy skills and seeing and hearing that vocabulary at the same time is proven within research to be supportive of comprehension. And students who need support when it comes to attention and focus.
So when we really think about it and we look at the research, um, we are really seeing that it's just about everyone um, can benefit from captions. And since um, one of the predictors of reading achievement is time spent reading, the use of captioned content has the ability to benefit each and every student in your classroom, even the ones in preschool. So we want to take a moment and just um, have this being said is that um, all of the tools and the, the items that we're sharing with you today, they are not a replacement for professional services like CART, CPrint, and TypeWell. If you have a student that has these already in their IEP and um, the IEP team has determined that that's necessary for them to benefit from their education, um, we do not um, want to make, we want to make sure that we're not saying that these tools that we're going to talk about are a replacement for those. We're supplementing um, those um, professional services in the classroom for all students. And on this slide, I'm not going to go through each of these, but know that um, you have access to these slides through Sketch. And we have listed here about six different um, areas of research that you can check out if you'd like to learn more about captions being a universal support for all students. So um, I know as a teacher, um, and maybe some of you are interpreters as well, you, you know, go to these amazing conferences and you're all fired up and then you go back to school and everyone's saying, okay, yeah, um, that's great. Um, it, you know, where's the research? So we provided some of that for you. And then here, um, I, I have been in the struggles, the trenches of um, trying to find caption content for students, spending hours trying to retrograde everything for students, and, you know, really talking until I'm blue in the face about um, what the students need and how we can plan for them before um, they get, they even get to the classroom. Um, However, it's still a struggle. Um, and I know you guys are struggling with that as well. So what I did was I came up with this sample language for a policy for each district. And um, if you click on um, the link here, it's also on the Patents website. Um, this will take you to a document, but it's also on the Patents website and I can provide that link to you. But I have the laws stated here and then here is some sample language that you can take back to your school districts and say, okay, here's some language that we can adopt into our bylaws and um, make it known to every teacher that we are going to share um, and have this in the forefront that everything that we purchase, that we make, um, which is incredibly valuable for this time that we're in with this e-learning, online distance learning, whatever you wanna call it. Um, every teacher is going to think about captions when they are developing their lesson plans and their materials, or if we're going to purchase materials, um, we're going to look to make sure that it's captioned um, and that transcripts are provided as well. So these things need to be talked about and perhaps this language helps you um, provide something that says here, this is what other districts are doing, let's adopt this. So we think that captions and UDL are like peanut butter and jelly, and we're really going to get into the meat now of today's presentation. They just go hand in hand in a universally designed space. And I would encourage you, if you would share with us, um, to rate yourself with a level of familiar familiarity with UDL. And that scale is as follow follows. So think about yourself in universal design for learning and a one to five scale. Are you feeling like you're a one and you're kind of unfamiliar with UDL? Are you a number two and you've heard of it? A number three, you've researched it a little or have tried it out a few times. Uh, number four, you're trying out multiple strategies within the framework or five, you could teach your colleagues and others about universal design. So lots of ones and twos I'm seeing, which is great because I think we're going to provide you um, an overview today. And if you want more information on how to go deeper, you can always reach out and that can be something we provide for you. So ones, twos, and threes. 
Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Oh, we have a four. Excellent. Trying out some strategies. That's wonderful. But we're all, you know, come into this with our own understanding, and we just hope that you all can grow today. And sometimes it just it differs on um, what position you're in too, on different strategies that you can try or how you're collaborating with your colleagues. So that all just depends. Um, and uh, you may have seen this picture before, but we wanted to briefly discuss it and show you um, a, in a visual way what UDL um, kind of means in a very simplistic basic level. So what we're trying to do with UDL is create equitable access. And um, we are explaining that through these three images. So the one on the left, um, is equal, equal accommodations. Everybody, you know, everybody gets the fair um, accommodation. Everybody gets the same accommodation. Um, and as we know in the schools, that sometimes are the, it doesn't work out very well when that happens. So you can, you can see that there is a child who is very tall and, and, and received a box, but he didn't really need that to see over the fence to see the baseball game. The middle child in the left hand um, picture, he received a box and it's just what he needed to see the baseball game. And then we see um, the, the smaller child, he received the box and it was fair for everyone to receive one, but he's still not able to see the baseball game. So now we're gonna move into the middle picture where um, everything, everybody has equitable access um, with the accommodations that they need. So it's not fair, it's not equal, um, and everybody has just what they need to see the baseball game. So now I'm gonna move to the right-hand picture where this is where UDL is. If you can compare the right-hand picture to the middle picture, there is a barrier there. The barrier is a physical barrier that everyone can see the wooden fence. What UDL um, is doing is taking away that barrier. There are barriers that exist in the classroom that um, we can accommodate for, but there are also ways to just remove the barriers altogether. And this is where gen, uh, general education and physical, um, sorry, general, general education and special education kind of blur the lines. And instead of the wooden fence, we have the um, chain link. Sorry, my mouth is so sensitive today. <laughs> um, so as you can see in the right-hand picture, the, the wooden barrier, the wooden fence is the barrier. We removed that. We have a chain link fence now where the children are still safe, but everyone doesn't need an accommodation anymore and they can see the, the game um, just as they are. So it's really cool. Yeah, I like this graphic. I know there's some like controversial conversations right now happening with this and equitability on a racial standpoint, but we're really, this really was a graphic created for the community with disabilities. And so I think this is great to show traditional teaching and differentiation and universal design, really removing barriers when we can. <clears throat> I'll let you just roll it into it, Katie. Sure, so um, we're gonna keep talking about UDL and UDL has three guiding principles, engagement, representation, action and expression. And we're gonna go into depth on each of these and share tools on each of these. But I wanted to, you know, in my mind, I always try to, okay, let's make this as simple as possible and give me one word to remember all of this. And the one word that I would give for UDL and all of these things that we're talking about is options. We're going to provide options for all students to engage um, in the content that you have and then show you what they know. We're going to give options on each of those. So we're going to give you options for tools to use um, in ways to integrate captions in all of these areas of UDL. Um, and for more information, www.cast.org has lots of, they're the national organization that promotes UDL. So lots of information there for you. All right, so up next is tools and we've already been here now sitting still for 35 minutes. So let's take um, a stretch break if you would, because we've got 60 minutes or so left, depending upon you know how quick we move. And take some deep breaths in and out. I saw a graphic recently that said, um, 
smell the roses, breathe, breathe in and smell the roses, and then blow out on your hot coffee and cool it down. So you can breathe in and blow out, or blow out the candle is something to think of too. Just take a moment and start thinking now of where could caption access benefit the students and individuals in your lives before we move forward. Again, if you have questions, let us know in the chat or on that lino wall. And I do see the question, will we be able to access the list of captioning resources after this conference and how? Yes, that captioning document is available for you forever. Um, I'll actually grab a sticky note and reply to you online. It's at tinyurl.com backslash crowdsourcing captions. And while tiny URLs are not case sensitive, I type with the capital letter on each word um, just to help visualize what the words are in those links so that it's easier to type in. TinyURL are, is a free resource for anybody to use to create shortened links or to customize their links as well, to take it away from a string of characters into something that's readable. All right, I feel like we're ready. So let's get our students engaged. Engagement is that first principle of universal design for learning and it's so important because our students aren't going to move through a, our content with us unless we hook them in and engage them into why it's important to learn what they're learning and to think about ways to engage them through tools as well. So three tools, um, actually four tools we're gonna share with you today include Clips, which is an app for um, Apple for iOS. Google, we're going to look at a couple Google options, which includes slides, captions, and then live transcribe. And then we're also going to take a peek at presentation translator for Microsoft PowerPoint. And Katie's going to model this for us shortly. So we're going to take um, a peek and start our engagement with clips. Apple Clips is what you can search for iOS on a tablet or on your phone. It is a free app, and it's what we used at the beginning of our session today to share that quick little video that Katie and I made, it seems like a lifetime ago, <laughs> getting, you know, when we were able to get together in person. It adds automatic captions to your videos that you create live. The captions are then editable, because we know that automatic speech-to-text captions are not perfect. They have about an 80% accuracy rate, but the fact that we can edit them is um, really crucial to make sure that we get 100% accuracy. And you can choose caption styles and filters or scenes that we're gonna uh, demonstrate for you to really bump up the level of engagement of, these, um, of the Clips app for you to use or for your students to use. Right now, kind of I'm thinking of engagement with you creating a video to engage your students, maybe in a cool background that has to do with the content of your lesson, or maybe you even um, get students engaged by having them create the video to kind of start the conversation on a new topic. And within clips, you can trim and then rearrange the little video clips that you make. So if you're like, oh, I, you know, oh, I stopped here, but I kept going, you could trim off the bad spot and keep what you liked and then you could even rearrange the videos into an order to then get a cohesive video that you share out with your students or play for your class or um, with whoever your your stakeholders are if you will so Katie's gonna model this for us so I'm gonna stop sharing and she's gonna start sharing so we can take a look at the app on her phone Okay, so right now I'm sharing my, my actual phone with you, and this is um, the, the Clips app. I'm just going to click that in on the left-hand corner here. And now you can see me without my filter or my background on. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, you can choose the scenes. 
which are really cool. And then you select those. Um, you can choose um, posters, you can choose just um, um, like other videos, you can make a video and then bring it into clips and add the captions on. But I'm going to show you how to add the captions and it's um, right here. I don't know if you can see that um, right here in the um, caption, the little caption picture on the left hand side of the red button. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to choose what captions I um, would like. I really like the ones that highlight the words as I speak. So I'm going to select those. Then I'm going to hold and press the red button in the middle to start. And then as you can see, it is um, captioning as I talk and as I make the video. Okay, now I'm going to push stop. I'm going to um, go at the bottom and click that clip. You can trim the clip so that it doesn't have the awkward start and stop. You can also select live titles um, and edit the way that you want it. So you can actually put Katie, um, uh, semicolons, um, have the speech, um, put punctuation, um, and then it actually now um, lets you choose uh, different styles if you'd like those. And um, the, the reason why it's called clips is that you can make little clips and put up, blend them all together to make a video. So you don't have to do it all in one sitting. And then in the lower right hand corner, you can send it off as an email. You can send it to, um, you know, social media or um, in your text messages. So it's a really cool free tool to add um, captions. Will you show us a, a scene real quick? Oh, yes. Sorry about that. That's okay. I just think these are a nice piece that's added to Apple Clips that is different than another app that we'll see soon um, that could really bump up the visual engagement as well. Okay, we're back on. And let me do this. Let me select this awesome background. So now I'm out in the grass and we're having a wonderful day. How cool is that? And as I move around, oops, there's yeah, a sign. It's so neat that it's 3D too as you move. Yep, there's an apple. <laughs> it's like so, honey, I trump the kids. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you for showing us that. Yeah, it's super fun. All right, so hopefully we're back into my screen. And let me grab just a couple things so that I can see the chat box. All right. Our next tool up is to engage your students by turning on these automatic captions like in Google. And automatic captions, I just, I know that they bring attention to your slide or to, you know, the uh, projector in your classroom if you're looking at a screen with students. So they're, they're watching to see if those automatic speech to text captions match what you might be saying. And it's a, a good piece of engagement for your students. With Google, it does require the internet. So if you can't access the captions in the um, caption presentation box. It's because the internet isn't strong enough to hold the captions at the moment. Um, there is no transcript or editing of the captions in Google, but you can adjust the size um, and caption location. And I could actually just model that for you right now. In fact, um, yes, we'll get to your question. Just, I just saw that pop up. Um, I could leave the captions on in Google since we don't have the option for that today, but I don't want to be confusing either. So if anybody wants to comment on that, that's something that is available. So for instance, I have this short little video here that will go through the options, but I can also model that for you. Let me get that out of the way. In the captions button of the um, presentation, 
I can click on the carrot and I could change the text position to the top or bottom of the slides. Because um, captions are typically on the bottom, that's what we're used to when it comes to TV captions and movie captions. That's where I like to leave them when I'm using them in a presentation style. You can also change the text size from small, medium, large to extra large. And I know Katie likes to recommend the medium size because it gives you two lines of text, which is also common. Um, when we go to the large and extra large, that can be a nice visual component for those individuals that might need larger text, but it does um, minimize the amount of text on the screen at once. So I will turn these on by just clicking on the button caption CC. And you should see my captions start live right as I'm talking underneath my slides. So it's nice that it puts them under the slides. It doesn't overlay them so they don't get in the way of any of your slide content. You could also just bring up a blank presentation and start the start your presentation and then start the captions. You don't have to have slides that accommodate or accompany your information. It could just be playing in the background. And so here on the screen, there is a little looping video that shows you what the captions look like. It's funny, I don't know why it's out of place on the slide, but you can see that. So that'll remain for you in case you're like, wait, how did you turn those on again? Um, there is this little looping video that walks you through clicking on that CC button and then adjusting maybe where you have them, top or bottom, or adjusting the size as well. Are the captions on the screen helpful for you all or would you prefer that I turn these off? If anybody wants to comment or for the room managers, I, I'm happy to follow suit. I just thought, hey, they are available. All right, we've got a helpful. Um, so Google captions work with Zoom whenever you're sharing your screen. So as long as you're sharing your screen and you're in a presentation, Laura, you should have access to the captions in Zoom. Um, in, in Google Slides. And in fact, if you have any questions, what I do a lot of times is I put the captions in a presentation in the background of what I'm presenting up front so that my captions are always there no matter where I jump out to. Because for instance, what's going to happen today, if I go back to the captioning document, I lose my captions. But if I run them in the background of another presentation, so I'm just layering windows on my screen, then I can always keep the captions in place. And I actually have a video that I could share with you on how to layer your captions. Right, Jenna, and I like that you're saying that um, layering the windows and when you share your screen in Zoom, you then want to select share desktop and not just one window, because then you won't see um, the captions when you do that, when you're laying, layering the windows. But yeah, perfect. Yeah, and I see Cindy mentioned, there is one thing too with the Google, you would have to, I would have to say my name each time I talk if I'm changing um, speakers. If any of you ever use Google Meet, just as a quick caveat, Google Meet will also use automatic speech to text captioning like you're seeing. And it will add the speaker's name because it's, you know, going off the meeting participants. So that's really nice in Google Meet. All right, now we're going to move into live transcribe. And I'm so excited about this. I've heard about um, the app for Android phones. And I've borrowed a tablet, played around with that. So it is available that way on um, Android tablets or your phone. And it, it's been available, I think, since like last year, January or something like that. I'm super excited. Um, people, you know, Gallaudet University um, helped develop this. It's super cool. But what I am going to show you is brand new to me. Um, well, it's been new for a few months, but I haven't really been able to share it with anyone. Um, and many, many of our students have Chromebooks. So I'm going to show you how you can get it on your Chromebook, not just a tablet or a phone, okay? And I have a Chromebook here that I'm gonna share my, you can't see it because I have a virtual screen, but I have a Chromebook here, just believe me, please. Um, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's so cool. 
Um, a few things that you need to do, um, and one of our colleagues, Julie, tried this out with me um, for her high school students. A couple things that you need to know. Your, the Chromebook needs to be 2017 or newer. You need to get with your IT people and allow them to add the app through the Play Store on their Chromebook. So I, I know, um, Julie, if you're still here with us, you're, you're like saying, yes, I had to do all of these things um, and switch out Chromebooks for high school students that wanted to use this. Um, a very cool thing is that you can copy and paste into a document um, so that students can have these notes, these the live caption um, software notes um, in a Google document and um, save them for later. So uh, lots of cool things. And I think I ran through all of those. Um, let me know if you have questions, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like um, by sharing my screen. Let me, one second, I'm gonna open up live transcribe on the Chromebook and then I'm gonna share my application. Okay, so this is the free app on my um, Chromebook and I wanted to let you know that this is the whole screen and it can be minimized to just be a sliver of the screen so that the student can do other things. Um, the other cool thing about it is that it's letting you know that it's re um, listening on the upper right, uh, right, yeah, right hand corner and um, it has a timestamp you can go off of this screen and go do other things and it will still pick up the speech. So as you can see, there's uh, punctuation, there's capitalization. Um, it's a really cool feature. Then I'm gonna go to the left-hand corner and select um, the settings so you can do different sizes. You can save this transcript for three days. So I have that toggled on. So at least you have some backup um, of three days. But then I'm gonna click off of that. And I'm going to click on the text. And there is a way to save this. It's not working for me right now and I don't have a mouse on this computer, but there is a way to um, copy and paste this. I'm sorry it's not working for me right at the moment, but I've done it before. Um, and so as you can see, it's really cool. I will show you what it looks like minimized. So there it is um, smaller, kind of looks like a phone. Um, and Linda, this is called Live Transcribe on the Google Play Store um, for Android products. And I'm on a Chromebook, which most of our students have. Okay, how cool is that? Anybody have any questions about this before I get off? Yes, yes, this is um, a very cool tool. And if you're on Zoom or Google Meet and your students want to have it captioned some other way, you can still use this. Um, so, you know, have your live meeting, have the students on their tablet or um, on, on their Chromebook as well. Um, iPad, it will not work on, well, they say that this is available right now on Apple products. However, I have not gotten it to work. Um, we've searched for the app and it has not um, been something that we can, that I have been able to try out. Although I, I hear it's, it's coming. Yes, a, a mic would, um, would help if you're in the classroom. Um, however, I do have a student up in Northern Indiana that is using their tablet on their, at their desk and they're loving it. Um, you know, I, I gave them some other options to try and they love this and they're sticking with it. So, um, you know, just try it out and see what works. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing this. All right.
right, I'm coming back to the share. Yes, Cindy, it's free, which is the best part. <laughs> For sure. Yep, not available on iPad, as you mentioned. I do have, we will share the Microsoft Translator app that we could talk about that could be used on an iPad uh, with some different options. And I had a second while you shared your screen, Katie, to get myself set up so that I have Google Slides running in the background now. So I can show you all, you see how I have two presentations open and then this that I could close. And so this front presentation that I'm using is just running on top of the window in the background with the, with the captions. So now when I exit the presentation, our Google Slides captions are still Our next tool is engaged to engage your students with Presentation Translator. And this is a free add-in for PowerPoint, and there is a built-in version of captions in Microsoft PowerPoint as well. The add-in is really what I'm going to talk about today because it's the most robust option for captioning in Microsoft. You do um, need to have Office 16, so you want to make sure you're updated. And if you're not updated, if you're a Microsoft school or um, an Office user, you can usually just update for free. Um, it might require your IT to allow the updates, but it should not cost anything for your district. And Presentation Translator also requires the internet, just like Google, uh, Google Slides captions. But it does provide an editable transcript from the session for whatever the captions were being used for. So on this slide, today I'm pre presenting in slides, but if I was presenting this in Presentation Translator or in Microsoft, I would model for you Presentation Translator, and it looks this looks like this. So this is a video without any audio, and here I'm in. Um, Microsoft PowerPoint, and I went to the View tab to access the um, captioning presentation translator tool. And so as it, as you start your presentation, that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. So this is how Microsoft PowerPoint fires up a presentation and it comes up with this universal slide that it adds to the beginning, which is really neat because it puts in this um, code QR code and then also a link so that you can actually have your students join the conversation uh, from their own device. So this is where maybe an iPad could come in handy. So now I am modeling in this video that you can end the slideshow as the presenter. And then it's neat because you get this captioning box that remains on the screen and so I don't actually have to be in present mode with Microsoft PowerPoint. I could just start the presentation, end it, and then I still get this caption box. So now I can move that caption box with me wherever I go if I'm presenting on a screen or through a computer for my students. So that's what you're seeing here is that caption box is now open on my Dell with um, Microsoft OneNote, for instance. To get the presentation translator add-on, you do have to be on a Windows computer. It does not work for Mac, so do note that. But if you're presenting from a Microsoft computer, even though your students are using Chromebooks or iPads, you could be presenting with the presentation translator download. So you just search presentation translator and download it. And then when you um, stop and open up PowerPoint again, it should be available to you. So that's the teacher view of Presentation Translator. Um, I just want to note again that your students have kind of two options then to join the conversation. They could use the Microsoft Translator app, and here is an arrow indicating a screenshot of the app free across all platforms. So you want to search Microsoft Translator for the app. And then using the person-to-person -person icon, you can join that conversation that the the, the host started, for instance. And then when you're in that conversation, I could actually, as 
a, a student or an attendee, I could choose to listen to the conversation in Spanish, for instance, if that's my native language. So the presenter is speaking in English, but I'm getting all of my subtitles in Spanish. So that's really great. You get a, a language option in addition to some other great features with Presentation Translator, the download, and then your students access it through the app. Or they could go to translate.it and then you give them a code. And here's what that would look like, the website. So if you said, hey, students go to translate.it, there would be a conversation code that was created when you started your presentation in Microsoft PowerPoint on a Windows computer. And then you could add in your details and your language that you'd like to get the captions in. So many languages available for translated captions and then enter that conversation. Also, I'll point out from this page, you could start a conversation on the tab in the upper right area of the screen. So if I'm a teacher and I'm not using Microsoft PowerPoint and I wanna start a conversation that is captioned or subtitled, I can say start conversation, log in, and you have to have a free Microsoft account just like you do for like Google, for instance. You just create that um, Outlook com account you log in and then you start the conversation and it would provide a code for you to share with your students or attendees to join the conversation in the language of their choice so there's lots to go with that Microsoft presentation translator or this website translate.it and if you have more questions let me know because I know it's a lot to take in in this moment without being able to model it specifically in PowerPoint And I wanted to point out um, that Southport High School on the south side of Indianapolis has tried this um, in the high school level um, and they absolutely loved it. There's over 70 languages here in Perry Township where I live. Um, and I know Natalie teaches here um, at Southport as well. Um, and the, the teacher wasn't very tech savvy and they just had a great time. And it was really useful for students, um, not just who are deaf and hard of hearing. So it was really cool to see them experience that. Are there any questions as we're now into an hour, we've got about 30 minutes left. Feel free to chat those. I can also check the Lino wall. Oh, there's a funny story. So that's great. Thanks for sharing your story here. We will get back to that. I can't wait to read it, but I won't take the time right now just to be respectful of the webinar time or the session time. Maybe take a deep breath in again before we move on. Smell the flowers and blow out the candle. All right, so we're getting our kids engaged through those tools we just showed you, through automatic captioning, live transcribe, and Apple Clips. Now we wanna represent our content through these three tools, the Described and Captioned Media Program, Edpuzzle, and Amara. Um, so raise of hands, or however you wanna do that. Um, the Described and Captioned Media Program, have you guys heard of this? I'm sure you might have heard of it in some capacity. However, I know a few years ago, I had never heard of this. And I think a few years ago, it was more of mailing out VHS tapes um, and then DVDs. And now it's more fully online. Um, however, if I would have known about this, um, I would have saved myself so much time, so much time. Um, they are fully funded by the, uh, the Federal Department of Education. They're streaming TV, movies, DVDs, interactive media, resources, and it's all subjects, even more than you can even think of, pre-K through 12th grade. Um, and we're going to show you what it looks like. You do need to do a login. However, it's free. And um, you can browse the topics here um, on the uh, upper right-hand corner. And... As you can see, there's tons. There's even more than just the core subjects. Um, and we're gonna pick language arts to see what it's like. And different areas within language arts. Um, sure, uh, punctuation. 
And so, um, you know, we, we always struggle with teachers that have that one video from 1995 that they just love. However, there's no captions. So um, perhaps we can point them here and select a new favorite video that has closed captions and some of it is um, described. And I've been asked if you can have um, captioned media that is in Spanish. And that is true on this website. You can turn the whole website into Spanish and just search Spanish um, captions. Um, and it's, it's awesome. So very cool. There are a couple of resources that I'd like to point out. If you click, if you go all the way down to the bottom and click e-learning um, resources on, um, so once we click that, then we're gonna go on the right hand side down and you may have been wondering, are there standards for closed caption? How about de um, described media? There are, and they're here for you um, so that you know the standards, you know, 32 characters, two lines of text on the screen. Um, we wouldn't have known those things if we hadn't had this lovely captioning tool or key. So another, uh, uh, Another tool, recommend media. You can't find what you want um, and you maybe have something specific in mind. Go ahead here and um, you can recommend media or ask them to have captions. Um, I went through this process because uh, the D.A.R.E. program, D-A-R-E program um, with the, the police um, in schools, I was trying to find that in closed caption media. Um, I came here first, um, they weren't able to do it for me, so then I went to D.A.R.E. and now, next year, all of D.A.R.E. Um, videos are gonna have captions on it because we, we um, worked through that process with the D.A.R.E. program. Um, however, I wanted to show you guys this um, as an option. Yeah, and somebody else, I think it was Owen mentioned that you can, or Natalie mentioned that you can suggest the resources. So I'm glad others know about that. And Katie introduced me to the Described and Captioned Media program. And I too was like, oh man, I wish I would have known this was available for playing caption content with my third grade students. Another tool that you can use to represent your content with captions is through Edpuzzle. And anybody familiar with Edpuzzle, like Katie mentioned, you can click yes in the participant panel or say yes in the chat. Edpuzzle is a free educator resource where you get to curate the caption media. So we're not captioning in it, but we're curating uh, quality caption content. It's available at edpuzzle.com or many extensions and apps. And you can stop and start the videos to check for comprehension along the way enabling that self-paced learning, which is kind of neat. So I'll show you what Edpuzzle looks like with a free account, like the Described and Captioned Media program. You do create a free teacher account. And then from the content tab in the upper right, and then on the, I'm kind of going over to the left-hand sidebar menu, you'll see popular channels. Edpuzzle has its own channel, and all of the videos I've seen on the Edpuzzle channel have been captioned. We know YouTube is hit or miss on captions, so do check that. But Khan Academy is going to be properly captioned, National Geographic, TED Talks, and so on. So for the majority of the videos shared here that you can curate, you're going to be finding quality captions in your video content. And I just, I, I really enjoyed these videos and my students really enjoyed them. For instance, this video I'm hovering on um, is some to Megan Trainer's all about that base, but it's all about that place, uh, place value. And oh man, my students would be singing it at recess. So I just know that they were paying attention and um, hearing that, that song. And that was a nice way to teach place value with caption media in my classroom. So give Edpuzzle a try. Um, if you're looking for a place to curate some content, you can create your classroom and then send out those videos to students. So it might be a nice tool in a virtual learning space, especially for providing caption content and media for your students. And this is edpuzzle.com. Another tool that I have learned about and think uh, is a wonderful resource is amara.org 
Is anyone familiar with Amara.org in the chat or yes or no participants panel? Amara is another free resource where you get to caption videos that you don't own. So if you do find a great video, or if you're a Canvas user, actually, if anybody uses Canvas as a learning management system and a, a content system for your students, if you want to caption videos in Canvas, it actually points you to amara.org. So we're crowdsourcing at Amara, and it's a great way to get your students involved. So think about students maybe creating a captioning group um, a volunteer group and so you set up media for them to caption and it teaches them about the importance of captions and where captions are usually placed on a screen and who uses captions. I think there's so much content to be included or your parent volunteers because this is a crowdsourced um, tool. You can get your parent or other uh, community members that want to volunteer engaged by saying, hey, this could be really helpful to my classroom. Can you caption these videos for me? Because captioning does take time. I find that for myself, it takes me an hour to caption 15 minutes um, in YouTube, for instance, if I'm just editing the captions. So uh, one hour video takes four hours of time and crowdsourcing can be a great benefit and time saver for you all. So amara.org looks like this, hit that tab. It's another, you know, we all, we've always got to create these free logins. So I am currently logged in, but you would see a similar home screen where if I scroll down to, um, to now the center of my screen, it reads start subtitling and there's a button that I'm clicking. If I start subtitling in Amara, I get two options to subtitle in a free public space or private space. I want to subtitle for crowdsourcing in a free space. So I click begin in the left hand option. And now I have, you can search for videos that have already been added. So for instance, these are some videos that I've added before to play with, or you can click add videos to the right of the search. And this is where you can type in that video URL. So for instance, Here's one that I often rec uh, reference, which is why it already popped up and was auto-populated. It is the metaphor video, and the language spoken in the video is English, so I want to choose English. And add to Amara public is what I would click now. Now I've already added it to the public, so I'm going to say cancel, and I'm going to click right here. This is the video, Metaphors for Kids, Add Edit Subtitles. I want to add them in English because there, there are none. Let's just, let's uh, search it. I'll make it faster if I type it in and add. And this will bring you into Amara's subtitle editor platform. So it will walk you through how to play the video, how to type what you hear, and then what to do when you're done typing. So it might take um, a volunteer a little practice to get to know this, or you might create a little how-to video on how to get in and, and get to the video that you'd like to be captioned or subtitled. But this can be done on videos you do not own and you're crowdsourcing in a public space. You could even change the language. So maybe if you're working with uh, new language learners like in a Spanish class, maybe you have them caption a video in Spanish as a test of their knowledge or to show you what they're learning. So that's uh, amara.org. Bookmark that and give that some exploration because I think that is a great tool when you find those videos that don't have accurate captions. Maybe while you wait on the Describe and Caption Media program to get a caption for you, or maybe they can't caption it for some reason, this is another option. Any other questions? I see Katie replied to Laura and said that Microsoft Translator is on all devices and web-based. So that's a nice feature of Microsoft. If there's any other questions, let us know. And now we're getting into that last piece of universal design for learning, showing what they know. Katie, you wanna tell us more about this? Sure. So I'm so excited. This is my favorite part of the UDL, um, the, the last part. And this is 
where the creativity just blossoms. And when you give students, and we know this for ourselves, when we are given options to choose what we want on, and how we show what we know, the creativity comes out. And as a teacher, you're often very surprised of what kids come up with and their hidden talents that we didn't really know that they had. Um, and so we're gonna give you three tools um, to have the students caption what they what they have. And we really wanna emphasize that we should start early on um, teaching kids to uh, make sure that their content that they're creating, because that's a huge part of school now and you know, growing up in this digital age where students are creating, they're watching YouTube, they, they wanna be that YouTuber, here's their chance. They get to make their content um, available for all students. So first we're gonna show you Clip-O-Matic. All right, there goes my mouse again. <laughs> all right, so Clip-O-Matic, as Katie was saying, is our first tool. It is an app cost tool at 499, the last time I checked for iOS. Um, and I think that it is at cost because you can caption in multiple languages. Whereas iOS clips, Apple clips that we showed at the beginning can only be captioned in English. If I'm speaking German, I can caption my video in German on Clipomatic. It's going to add those automatic captions like we saw in clips and we can edit them as well. And there are some filters and ways to choose caption designs to add interest to the video as well. Clipomatic is um, is a little more unique in the way that you edit the captions, but play around with it and give it a chance. I'm going to show you on this next slide a student using Clipomatic to show us what he knows in a, a short character study. I will note that this video was created before we knew how to edit the captions, and so they're not 100% perfect, but they could be edited to be 100% accurate. Hi, I'm Sam, and today we'll be talking about five character traits for the main character of The Martian by Andy Weir, Mark Watney. Mark is a very smart person. He has a degree in engineering. He's driven. He's always driven to get back to Earth once he's left on Mars. He's humorous. He makes several jokes throughout the book. He's strong. He gets hit by an antenna and knocked out, but still is able to get back up and walk to his um, spaceship. He's kind. He forgives the crew for leaving him behind. So that's a quick sample of a way to use Clipomatic to allow your students to show you what they know in a caption content in a, in a caption space. And again, a conversation to have with your students about why captions are important and why they're used in our culture, in many cultures. So give Clipomatic a, a peek and see what you think. And uh, we hope that it gives your students some more options to share what they're learning and to show you in a way that makes sense for them what they're, what they're learning. Because like Katie said up front, UDL means options. It doesn't mean that this week we're all creating videos and showing what we know. It's saying, how do you want to show me what you know? Do you want to make a video? Would you like to write a paragraph? Would you like to act it out? Um, would you like to just verbalize it to me in person? So we're giving options all at the same time to allow student choice and really empower them. Our next way to express themselves is with Flipgrid. Have you guys caught the Flipgrid fever? I'm sure your students have um, if you've tried it out. It is um, really fun and some really cool things coming out. Um, Flipgrid was bought by Microsoft, so they are ever changing and making it more and more accessible. Um, so this is a free app and it's web, it can be web-based as well. Um, full transcript can be available. Um, that is an ad, um, educator admin that can have those um, that toggle on. Um, now you can edit the captions. We're going to show you what that looks like in a moment. And now there's multiple languages as well. They do not transcribe um, translation. They don't, um, they don't translate different languages um, from English to a different language. But if you are speaking a language, then the captions would come up in that language that you are speaking. Um, we're going to show you what that looks like. 
And so um, Jenna's here and she's an educator and we're going to click on her My Grids tab. Then we're gonna go down to the grid and we're gonna click on the pencil on the right hand side. <clears throat> And it used to be that you needed to toggle on captions. However, they've made it built in. So you don't need to toggle on captions anymore, but you do need to select what language you um, would like for the captions. So we will choose English. And I believe that English is the default. So if you did change it, you would just then click that upgrade, update grid. And yeah, update grid. And then you can go back. Um, once you are um, in the grid um, that you have selected, then the admin can go in and edit the captions. Yep, I can model that. Sorry, I jumped out too quick. That's okay. On, um, and it will be on the action tab once you're in the grid. And also for those schools that while this is coming up for those schools that are in Canvas, if you didn't know, you can integrate Flipgrid and some other really cool tools, especially um, Edpuzzle. I just did that last week. You can integrate these into your um, uh, Canvas um, assignments and have students um, go directly there from your Canvas. So um, really cool. You just need to go to settings and add as an app. So now we're in the grid and we are going to click on um, actions and if you scroll down then you can edit the captions um, or download the captions as a, a transcript so um, last that we have checked only admin has the ability to um, edit the captions this is a little like looping video that just shows you I'm clicking I'm toggling or I'm sorry I'm selecting the button of CC and it's coming on at this time that I made this, you couldn't um, edit them. So there's no, um, there's no punctuation and that type of thing in, in there, but it's coming along very nicely. Um, Flipgrid is really listening to all the things that we need. Sorry, for some reason, the video isn't linked properly. That's but okay. Yeah, those captions turn on pretty easy, right, Katie, with the CC button? Sure, and this is me responding to a student. So that instant feedback and, and peer feedback, le learning from peers is something that's really cool in Flipgrid. So um, if you haven't, check it out. Yeah. And then we're gonna bring you full circle back to expressing themselves with clips, that Apple Clips for iOS. Uh, we have not found a comparable video app for the Android system. We've got live transcribed for great captioning, but we haven't found that video app where we can add the automatic captions yet. So here's just another sample of a student using clips to show you what she knows in math. Hi, my name is Nola Thompson. Today, our thing is division. Our division problem is 9 divided by 3. 9 mi minus 3 equals 6. 6 minus 3 equals 3. 3 minus 3 equals 0. How many times did you subtract 3? Three? 3 times. So 9 divided by 3 equals 3. We got it. Just in case that was not showing well for you, because I know my computer is uh, running at full capacity now. Know that it is in the slides for you to play back if you want to see it. But it's cool because she tells us what she learns about a division problem and walks us through her process and her thinking in the way that she does repeated subtraction. So we can clearly see what she's thinking and her method of choice. And then that would allow us, in case she got the answer incorrect, to figure out where she made her error. Just like a student shows us what she knows or he knows on paper when it's important to show the steps. So videos can really um, be a way to engage your students and to have them show you what they know just the same as paper and pencil. 
Uh, Cindy asked a couple questions and she said security using these. So I see Katie mentioned, yes, you'd want to check with your district. And then for uh, how many, the time restraint on making these videos, there is no time restraint that I have seen to where I've been cut off in clip or in clips as far as the length of the video. But I am picturing these in short bursts. So maybe not more than a 15 minute show what you know type of video. All right, we are nearing the end, and we have three more tips for you that are available in the slides. And I know Owen mentioned it earlier. Use filters in YouTube and Google to search for caption videos. And in the slides that you have access to, these two uh, words, YouTube and Google, are big videos to show you how to search for caption videos so that you know that they're already captioned when you click on them. There's also a quick how-to video on how to set up all your YouTube videos to automatically play with the captions turned on. So that way you don't have to remember where the CC button is or if a student, you know, they, they really need to use them, but they forget. That way they're always set up in YouTube. And don't forget to turn your captions on at home too, right, Katie? Like there's so many uses for captions in our daily lives. Yes, and um, once you start using them and suddenly, you know, you're on a different TV or, or device, you're like, wait, where'd they go? I can't understand wh what they're saying. Um, I really miss them when I'm watching the big TV with everybody because um, on all of my devices, I have them on. Um, and also, um, when you are allowed to go out and, you know, um, go to restaurants or the gym or how, whatever, um, you, wherever you go and there's screens on, just advocate for them to turn on the captions. Um, pave the way so that accessibility is just something that is, um, everybody's used to it. Um, and we all benefit from them. All right, our last uh, questions here. I'll check the Lino wall. And we see, if itinerant teachers do not have a set number of students in a classroom, wouldn't it just be better to have individual students create their own video in whatever format they desire and then post it via Google Classroom or whatever LMS is being used by their corporation rather than use Flipgrid? So it's totally up to you how you design um, the way that you use those videos. Yeah, if you want to just have them post it into your Google Classroom or for instance, Canvas. Again, if you're a Canvas user, Flipgrid is an integration with Canvas. So you could actually integrate it there. Um, Flipgrid just provides that platform for creating the video. Whereas if you just ask students to do it on their own, they might not know where to go or you might be getting sent multiple types of video. So it just kind of um, makes a universal site for you to use. Uh, I think it's just personal preference. Katie, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, you can use it um, however um, you would like. I, I definitely agree with um, what Jenna's use, are saying. Um, it just depends on how things are set up. And if you have one activity that you would like everybody to do peer interaction or, or instant feedback, um, Flipgrid is a great way to go. Um, yeah. That's that, that piece too that I'm glad you just said. Flipgrid makes it easy for you as the teacher to send a video comment back or the peer to send a video comment back right on that video. So instead of having to figure out how to link the videos, if you're doing like a conversation with videos in a learning management system, Flipgrid kind of is the way to uh, add those pieces together. All right. And Please share your biggest takeaway on that Lino wall if you'd like and know that that crowdsourcing document remains for you. We have one minute. And so here is your QR code for today's evaluation. The ending code is classroom for our session today. And we can pop, um, or maybe the host would put the link to the evaluation in the chat, or you can scan that QR code with your mobile device as well. So thank you all for being here and we appreciate your questions and know that we will continue to support you through email or on that line of wall with any additional questions or resources that we can share. I also, I don't know if we reviewed how to use QR codes um, in this session, but if you have a smart device, it can be an iPad, however, just open your camera um, and it can be Android as well. Um, open your camera, hover, don't take a picture, hover over the QR code. And then at the top of the screen, a link will come and you click on the link at the top of the screen and that will take you to the evaluation.
Our beginning code was captions. Our ending code is classroom. Thanks everybody for being here. Yeah, we appreciate your time and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. We know Past Project does a great job.